Okay, so uh, we the last time we met on Tuesday, we looked at how to import a module in math in Python, and the module we're using for that particular purpose was the math module. So today we're going to look at the math module in detail, uh, how to import the math module, and also how to uh, use some of the data or the constants and also the functions in the math module. So basically, what the math module is. This module uh, comes from some other language called C, but it has been made, it's available in Python and it contains a bunch of uh, mathematical functions which are basically very important. I think they're good to it if a physics student and a mathematics student, okay, and they're using Python. So we're going to look at this and see what's on offer so that when you want to do something with Python, which involves mathematics, then you know where to go to. So basically that's what the math module is. It gives us a collection of functions and data which we can use for our thing. So the first thing we're going to do, um, so the first thing we're going to do with the math module is we're going to import it. And as we learned on last time we met, uh, for you to access the data and also the functions which are in a particular module, you have to import that module into Python so that Python can access those things. So in this case, uh, what we do, we use the keyword import followed by the name of the module which you want to import, which is the math module here. So we run this, we run that, okay, it runs. Then once the import has been done, we can have a look at what we have imported by printing out the contents of the math module like this. So we use the dir function to access the contents of the math module and then we use the print function to print them out on the screen. So when you do that, this is what we have access to. So there is all these things here. So these things I'm going to highlight, these are the, all the contents of the math module. So you have arc cosine, arc hyperbolic sine, arc sine, uh, arc hyperbolic sine here, actan, then actan two, then there's that hyperbolic actan, then there's something called seal, there's combo, there's copy sine, there's cos, hyperbolic cosine, there's a function called degrees, there's something called distance, then there's E, Euler's number, uh, there's other things, uh, there's the exponent, there's F fabs, uh, float for fabs, uh, factorial, flow, F mod, uh, there's gamma, there's hypotenuse, there's infinity here, and there's a bunch of other things which are there, which some we'll just look at the ones which we can actually use in our course. Uh, there's something called not a number here, there's pi here, pi, this is pi, there's power function, there's product, uh, radians, uh, remainder, sine, hyperbolic sine, square root, uh, tan, hyperbolic tan, uh, tau, and truncate. So basically, this is what we have imported. So we have imported these functions, and some of these are functions. Uh, some of them are just constants like pi and e. Uh, those are constants. So we'll have a look at what... Okay, so the next thing we want to do, so how do you import the data? So basically the data in this case, uh, these, the data in this case, uh, there is pi, uh, and also there is, uh, there is the E, and I think there's also tau somewhere, tau here, there. So um, before we do that, yeah, so basically those are the data points, which are the, the data constants. So if you want to import uh, data from a module, so basically if you know the name of the data you want to import, for example, pi here, you just say uh, from, so you start with the keyword from, uh, followed by the name of the module, so from math, import pi, that. So when you run that, so that's going to import pi, then after that, you can display the value of pi you've imported there. So you get your value of pi, which is 3.14159265538973. So that's the value of pi 
they've imported. So you can actually import data which has been stored in a module. So your module can contain data, your module can contain functions. So there are two things, it can contain data or constants or numbers and you can import those numbers as long as those numbers have been assigned to variables. The other thing you can import is the value for Euler's number. So you can say from math, import E, from math, import E, and that's Euler's number. So you do that for the import task, then you, you display E, that's what you get. So that's your number for Euler's number, two, 0.718281828455 uh, uh, I thought the other piece of data you can import is tau so you can say from math import tau I thought then of course you can display tau which is that that there are other constants for example uh, which are stored in the math function, in the math module, for example, infinity. So there's a value which represents infinity there. So you can say from math, import infinity. So this is AFN, this is for infinity, like that. Uh, so if you import that, then if you display infinity, so that's what you just get. So infinity is represented by that. Yeah. The other thing is something which is not a number. If it's not a number, that this is also some kind of value. Sometimes you will see. So you can say from math import NAN, which is not a number. So if you do that, do an import, then you can do a display. There, so NAN. So basically these are the uh, data which are contained in the math module. Of course, if you want to see, uh, how do I know which ones? Which ones are data and which ones are functions? Uh, you can ask for help on a module, for example, uh, here, I will add something, say, I will add something, say, so get help on, on math module. So it's not that I know these things from the head, no, you can it's possible for you to look through a module after you look through a module then you see what the module contains so and how do you get help using the help function then you give it the name of the module and that's what you have there so here so this is basically uh what you have here is everything which is there on the math module so this file contains uh what the name of the module is the name of the module is math and of course there's a reference so if you click on this this link here it's going to take you to some place on the internet where there's more information about the math module there's a small description a bit here and of course down here you have a description of what the math module does so the description so this module provides access to the mathematical functions defined by the c standard so that's what the module does so you've got a description and of course so like i said a module can contain two things so here you start with the list of functions. So these are the functions which are in the math module. So that list of functions, like that. Then at the end of the module, so there's a list of functions, so there's, and how the functions are supposed to be used. So you've got the functions and a small description of how that function is supposed to be used. Then at the end, uh, if you go down, you go down, Okay, here. So at the end, there is also data. What kind of data is contained in that particular module? So in this case, these are the things I was referring to when I was talking about E, infinity, uh, NAA, pi, and tau. So these, this data is described in this module. So basically, that information is there. Okay, any questions so far? Is there any question so far? It's clear. it's clear. Okay, next we move on to. Yes, a good question. These formations, the variables that are stored in the math module. 
Yes. We don't have to put them. They're already mm. automatically there or what? You just yes, they are already there. You don't have to put them. You just have to import. Oh. Yeah, so oh. you start with you start by importing the math module or you can import specific variables if you already know what the name of the variables and how they're stored. All right, thank you. Yeah. So you don't have to unless you're trying to create your own module because it's also possible apart apart from you importing other people's modules in those modules which come with python it's also possible for you to create your own modules like i will show in the next class which you're going to have okay so basically that's how you would import right, that. you. yeah that's how you'd import that data uh next bit is you can also import functions because a module can have data or it can have functions, it can have both data and functions. So in this case, uh, there are some functions which we are interested in. For example, we are interested in the functions radians. Now, the function radian, what it does is it converts an angle from degrees into radians. And the reason why you have to use the radian function is because the trigonometric functions which are stored in the math module, they do not accept angles and degrees. They only work with angles in radians. Is that clear? So this radian function becomes very, very important. That's why, yes. it's, that's why it's the first function you're looking at. If using this function, you can convert your angle in degrees to radians. Then the result of this conversion, that's what you can use as your angle in radians to give one of these functions, whether it's cosine or sine or tangent and stuff like that okay the reason is because as you are going to see our trigonometric functions only accept angles and radians so with this radian function radians functions it's very quick way of converting your angles from degrees to radians so we know that this uh, fun radian function is there in the math module so we're going to say uh we're going to import it from math se separately so that we can just we don't we can just work with the radian itself so you can see from math import radians okay so that's our import then after we import this function radians we can ask for help on how to use this function radians so you can say help radians now when you ask for help radians you get a small description uh first of all where the function is found so this function is found in the math module okay then you get an explanation a small description of how to use the, fu the function so basically you type radians then you give it the angle who the angle in degrees you want to convert to radians and what does the function do it says convert angle x from degrees to radians so basically that's how this particular function does and one of the angles which you're going to convert to show how just to show how this thing works is the angle 180 degrees so 180 degrees converted into radians is just actually pi so we say if we say radians 180 degrees yeah radians 180 degrees and what you get is pi there so you get your angle as pi are we clear so you just give it your angle in degrees then it's going to give you the value of that same angle in radians is that clear Okay, the next uh, function you're going to look at is another function which does something similar to radians, but this function is called degrees. So this function degrees is used for converting angles from radians to degrees. Because why is that necessary? Because we work with degrees. We have a good idea of what 45 degrees is, what 90 degrees is, okay? But we, normally we do not do our calculations in our head in radians. But computers do their calculations which contain angles in radians. So sometimes when, once you have done your calculation, you want to find out what your angle is in degrees, you have to change your radians into degrees. Okay, so basically the degrees function converts angle x from radians to degrees. So basically that's what it does. As the name suggests degrees, it gives you what your angle is in degrees, from radians to degrees. So we're going to import it from math, say from math, import degrees, like that. And of course, uh, if you want help, after you do an import of a function, you can always ask for help on how to use that function there. So this also, so you're told where this function is found, it's in math module, and how the function is supposed to be used. So there, you just give it x. Uh, convert angle x from radians to degrees. So there's an angle we know, 
in radians and that is pi so the value for pi pi is actually an angle but it's in radians so if we give the value for pi to this function degrees then we run it it's going to convert the value of pi to what the va what the angle is in degrees and that's equals to 180 degrees are we clear on what these two functions have looked at doing yes sir okay the next function uh we're going to look at is the sine function we know what sine function does but the thing with sine and its its friends the trigonometric functions when you are using a computer and especially with computer programming the sine functions accepts only angles which are given in radians so you have to convert your angle from degrees to radians then the, give the converted angle to the function is that clear so in this case we are going to so we're going to import a uh, sign from the math module so you say from math import sign so we run that then of course after you do that import you can ask for help on what sign does what the sign function does so here we are taught we're shown how to use it it's just sign x so return the sign of x now x is an angle but x should be measured in radians is that clear You see that? X should be measured in radians. So here I will do something like that. I'll create a variable theta. Uh, this theta is going to have it's going to have this bit. It's going to have our angle in radians. So uh, this radians 45 is going to give us the it's going to convert 45 degrees into radians. Then we're going to store it in theta. Then after that we use theta here like that is that clear then we get the value for theta is that clear what you've done that's your sign 45 degrees hello So here, uh, I need to share. Let me share again the screen. Okay, so can you see what you've done here? So we had 40, the angle 45 degrees, so we change into the radians and we store the value, the angle as theta, which is 45 degrees in radians. Then we work out what the sign is here. Are we clear there? Yes, clear. Okay. Similarly, uh, we have cosine. Uh, this one is going to give us a cosine, but of the cos uh, retain the cosine. Yeah, it's supposed to be cosine. The cosine of x measured in radians. So of course, for us to use that function, we do an import. So from math, import cosine. And next, uh, we can ask for help on how to do. It says retains the cosine of x measured in radians. So in that case, uh, here we already have. Theta, so we can just say the cosine of theta, again, that gives us that, so I think, there. So uh, up here, where did we start from? Here, I think it would be better if I do this. Mm. Let's 
see brightly. So there. Okay. Then here. All right. So that's how you you'd get your cosine. So you have to change your angle, whatever angle you have, you have to change it into radians, then use that. Similarly, you can work out the tangent, uh, retain the tangent here, yeah. tan x, tangent of x, and of course the angle is still has to be measured in radians, but for you to use that, you have to import your tan, you can get help on tangent, that, so there it says retain the tangent of x measured in radians. Similarly, again here, you say theta, tangent of theta. There, if you do cut the tangent of that, 45 degrees, that's what you get. Okay. Uh, these other things, uh, for example, you want to work out the arc cosine. So in that case, you have to import arc cos from the math module. So this gives you the arc cosine also. The result of this thing is going to be measured in radians. That, so you ask for help with what arc cosine does. So here, retain the arc cosine of x measured in radians. So usually what you're used to when you work out the arc cosine is you get your angle back in degrees. But in this case, for example, when you work out the arc cosine of this uh, this, the cosine of that, uh, then you do the arc cosine of this value here. What you get is you're going to get your, you get, you're going to get this. Now, this is an angle, but it's in radians. So if you want to change this angle into degrees, then you have to give back this result, or this, which is what we have up here. You have to give it to degrees. And if you do that, you have to give it the degrees function. And if you do that, um, you get your angle as 45 degrees. So there are two steps basically there. You get your theta, then you put, give it back to the degrees function. So you have with this, this bit here gives you your angle in radians. But then you want to change this thing into degrees so you have to give it to the degrees function like this okay or the other way you could do it is you could say okay this bit that's going to be theta uh theta in radians theta in radians so that's your theta theta rod then you give theta rod here so your theta rod, theta rod there, that gives you 45. So this bit here, from the arc cosine, it gives you theta in radians, then you change your theta in radians to degrees, then you get 45 degrees. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Similarly, we can do the same thing for arc sign. Uh, you import it, then you ask for help. That. Then the arc sign of this is going to be something. There. Again, you can store that uh, in some variable. Theta, this is in radians. Then you give this theta rod theta rod degrees, and you get your your answer as 45.999 of course that runs out uh, that rounds off to, to 45 degrees so basically that's how you would work out your your arc cosines so remember when you're working out your arc cosine or arc sine what you're getting is an angle but your angle is in radians are we clear what you're getting is an angle but your angle is in radians 
okay so if you want to see your angle in degrees and radians are what you use for doing calculations but if you want to see your angle in degrees then you have to change it similarly uh actan uh, you import etan or actan from math module like that then you can ask for help on how to use that so basically you get a small description of how to use this function uh, return the arctangent measured in radians so you get your arctangent measured in radians and of course in this case i'm trying to work out the arctangent of this angle here uh that 0 0.9999 like that so in that case when i do that that's what i get i get this i can work out this of course this is in radians the 0 0.78 uh, 53 all this thick whole thing this whole thing is in radians so I can store this in a variable like we have done before like uh, theta broad just a minute Out. then I want to find out how much this is in degrees so I will put theta right then and it comes out as 45 degrees are we clear on how we handle uh, trigonometric uh, angles and also on the, uh, their axes Clear. yeah so the thing you're supposed to take away from here is that uh when you're having to do trigonometric angles all the angles have to be given in radians and for that you have what you your radian function to change your angle from degrees to radians then once you change your angle from degrees to radians you can give your angle now to these trigonometric functions and they're going to work when you want to work out the arc sign yes you get your angle but the angle you're going to get is going to be in radians so that angle which you have in radians has to be changed back into degrees and you ha you have to use your degrees function there are other functions which are there for example this one uh sqrt this one is used for getting the square root of a number any number so you get the square root for this and for us to use this you can import it from math say from math import sqrt that's for square root sq this is for square, RRT is for root. That. So we do an import of this, then of course we can ask for help. There. So what does this one do? Uh, it says uh, SQRT, retain the square root of a number. For example, here, uh, you want to get the square root of 100, you just say SQRT 100, and you get your 10 you can also probably want to get the square root of a number with like uh 25 you can say sqrt 25 25 so sqrt 25 to do that you get five but it, what you can see is that sqrt usually gives you square root you get your square as a number with some decimal point okay so that's how you work out your square root so if there is somewhere in you have, you've got some expression where there is you have to do a square root that's how you do it are we clear on the square root yes uh the next function is what's called power so this one is used for expressing some number to the power of some other number for example so here uh this is P -O -W. so this power function is available in the in the math module but python also comes with a power function somewhere so you can still use power either way so in this case we import this power from the math module and we can ask for help on how to use this power function okay so here basically says power uh, return x raised to the power y so this is x to the power of y so if for example we want to get 3 to the power of 4 3 to the power of 4 3 to the power of 
4 so uh, the we put the 3 first here so we say power so that's going to be 3 raise the power of 4 that's going to be like this something like this so if you want that to the power of 4 you run that you get h1 the other one uh, 5 uh, 25 to the power of half so basically this is just a square root thing 25 to the power of half uh, you get 5 then 125 to the power of you can also give a fraction so this is a decimal number so here we've put an integer so you raise 25 uh, 5 uh, 5 to the power of oh sorry I, I didn't run this uh, 5 to the power of 2 so you can raise to an integer the power of an integer then here you can raise the power of a decimal that's uh, 5 then here you can also raise the power of a fraction 25 to the power of a third and you get your 4.99 which is just 5 are we clear so that's another function you're likely to power function it's another function you're likely to use a lot in your physics courses so are we clear on how we use the power function Are we clear on the power function? Yes, sir. Okay. Another one which does a function which does something. Usually, this is something called seal or sealing, which is short for sealing. Now, this function is very interesting because this function uh, rounds off a number to the whatever number you have. Let's say, especially these numbers with decimal points. It will round off that number to the nearest, largest integer. To this kind of like. So I, I will show you an example. So we import it for math, and uh, we get help on what ceiling does. So it rounds off the number to the next uh, integer. So basically here, uh, it says return the ceiling of x as an integer. So basically, this ceiling of x as an integer. This is the smallest integer which is greater than or equals to x so what you're going to get when you give ceiling a number it's going to find the nearest smallest integer which is greater than the number you've given it for example we're going to give ceiling this value 6.8 now 6.8 is a float it's not an integer so the nearest integer which is greater than x which is greater than 6.8 is 7. So in this case, for ceiling uh, 6.8, you get 7. Even if you changed your 6.8 to 2, the nearest integer which is greater than this is to 7. So you still get 7. So you always get 7 in this case. Because that's the nearest number which is greater than this number here. The opposite of what ceiling does is something called floor. Now, floor is going to give you an integer which is the nearest but the smallest than the number of you smaller than the number you've given you, you've given it. So we say import floor. In our case of uh, like this, uh, so here, uh, so this is the largest integer which is less than x. So in our case here of six point eight, so the integer which is the largest integer which is less than six point eight is a 6. So if you say floor 6.8, then you're going to get yourself 6. Like that. So depending on what you're trying to do, it's a way of rounding off this number. Sometimes it's necessary for you to round off the value you have to the nearest integer or to the nearest, the nearest largest, the nearest smallest integer greater than that number or to the nearest uh, largest integer less than that number. So depending on whether you want to round off this number to the nearest up integer or the nearest lower integer, you use ceiling or floor. Are we clear? On what these functions do? Repeat this statement yes. again for the, for the floor. The floor is going to round off your number. Usually when you're rounding off a number, we round off up, okay? So that you can get, you get an integer. But floor does the opposite. 
it will round off the number going down. Okay, okay. Yes. So instead of 6. Point, when you're rounding off, normally you say 6.8. When you round it off, you get 7. Right? If you round off 6.8, you get 7. That's basically what ceiling does. That's what ceiling does. But when you normally you're rounding off to the nearest larger number, integer, but with floor, you're rounding off to the nearest uh, integer, which is largest integer, which is smaller than the number you have. So you're going down like that. The well, ceiling takes you up. All right, thank you. Yeah. Then there's also a function called factorial. So basically this one works out the factorial of a particular number. So you can, from math, import factorial. Then uh, if you ask for help on what factorial does and how to use it, it says factorial x, it just finds x factorial like this. So in this case, uh, for example, uh, a number of cases, if you want to find the factorial of zero, the factorial of zero is one. If you want to find the factorial of one, you get a one. Uh, if you want to find the factorial of two, say factorial two, you get two. Uh, factorial three, then things start changing a bit now. Factorial three is six. Uh, factorial four, you get 24. Factorial five, you get 120. So basically the factorial function gives you a factorial of some particular number so if you want to work out the factorial quickly that's a function you go to are we clear are we yes, clear? Clear. okay then, then there's another one another function which is very handy now this is for the exponent this is just e to the power something so basically the exponent function raises e to the power of x so in this case the exponent function is already there in the math module so you say from math import exponent so in this case if you want e to the power one like this one get e to the power one so you just say exponent one so e to the power one that's what gives you that's what you get without then e to the power two that's what you get uh, e to the power two run it you get that uh, e to the power three that you also have another expression another function this one now this one has got basically it has got everything in one so basically here what i'll try to break it as much as i can so here this is an exponent e to the power then this one the m is minus so exponent minus one so you have got e to the power x minus one so basically this expression what what this thing is trying to work out is trying to work out this e to the power x minus one that's what it tries to work out so this is a very special function which works out e to the power x minus one are we clear yes sir yeah so if you want to work out such a particular expression e to the power x minus one so you say from math import uh exponent m1 so in the case of um, here uh, e to the power x where x is 1 minus 1 so you say these bits then you put one there so that's what you're going to get so in the other one so exponent e to the power x uh, e to the power minus 2 minus 1 like that that's what you get so basically your e to the power x things are being reduced by by one like that so basically that's what this function does so basically it's a special special thing e to the power x minus one it's something is something which you might find in some mathematics or some physics expression there so if you needed to do that then that's the function you'd go to okay are we clear on that one yes sir uh next comes another function I'm just picking uh, the ones you would need, most likely, because there are more than that, okay? I'm just picking the ones which are applicable to our physics course and stuff like that. Uh, this one, uh, f-fubs. So this bit here, 
abs is for absolute. So you're trying to retain the absolute value of a floating point. So the way you have uh, absolute value of x like that, where in x is uh, an integer, you can find the absolute, but sometimes you might need to find the absolute value of some, some, some figure which is not an integer. So this is what, what this, that's the one, this is a function you use, f abs. So f abs retains the absolute value of a float x. So we can import it from the math module, like that. Then you can ask for help on f abs. What it does. So here, retains the absolute value for floating point number like this. And of course, one of our most common floating numbers is this value for pi. So if you've got, if you give this particular function minus uh, 3.14, so what you're going to get in return is just going to be the absolute value of that, you get 3.14. Uh, then if you give it uh, this bit, you still get your 3.14. Well, that's what the absolute value function does. So you're getting the absolute value of, uh, of a floating point. This other function is modulus. So basically it gives you the remainder when you divide a bunch of numbers. Okay, so retains the modulus of the remainder, modulus is the remainder of x divided by y. So if you divide a bunch of numbers, then you can get the remainder with that bit. So from math, import f mod. And uh, in this case, that. But you're going to get your remainder as some number, which is a float. So here, basically like this. So basically that. So in this case, you've got uh, 20 divided by 6. So if you do the 20 divided by the remainder of dividing 20 by 6, but you want this as a what is you want this as a as a float so you're going to get it as 2.0 like that so you get it as 2.0 here so basically that's a remainder as a float uh 20 divided by the remainder of dividing 20 by 6 you get it at 2.0 that's what it gives you here the remainder of dividing uh 10 by 3 so you get your modulus as 1.0 like that are we clear On what f mod does f mod just works out the remainder and it gives you the remainder as a floating point number yes, we are clear. yeah so you get your remainder as a floating point number then there's also another thing kind of mathematical function which is important which are logs logs are very very important uh, a logarithm is a way of uh you you are it's a way of expressing a number to a particular power so in this case the power is known so basically what you're asking yourself is uh, to what power should you raise a particular number to get something else? So basically in this case, the base, uh, if you just say log X with Python, it's assumed that the base is a uh, Euler's number E. Okay. So I'll try to explain this as much as I can. So from math, import log. So when you do this from math import log, then you ask for help. So when you ask for help, uh, okay, so here it says uh, log, log x. So if you don't provide the, the base, so it will assume that the base is e. So return the logarithm of e, x raised the given base. So in this case, if the base is e, what you're actually working out is the natural log. If the base is e, what you're working out is the natural log. Otherwise, if you specify something else, then you're going to work out the power in that particular base. So for example, here, if I want to work out this, log 10 of 100. So basically, I'm saying to what power, so I'll try to explain this. So when you write an expression like this, then what it means is you're asking, what power should I raise 10 to for me to get 100? What power should I raise 10 to so the base is 10 so you're saying 10 to the power something x should give you 100 so what is the x in this case for that for log 10 it's simple it's just 2 so here you get your 2 so 10 to the power 2 gives you 100 okay that's what this is 10 to the power 2 gives you 100 but you have got an option 
you can put any other base you want for example two so you're saying in this case you're asking yourself two to the power x gives me 100 what is x are we clear Is it clear what I'm asking? What I'm saying here? Yes, sir. Yeah, we're saying two. In this case, we're saying log two hundred. So basically, saying two to the power x is equal to hundred. What is x? So yes, that, sir, please. Yeah. So that's it. that's log hundred. Then the base is two, like that. Then in this case is going to be six point like that. Uh, then you can try to. If you just want the natural log, so log e, then hundred. This is just basically the natural log. You don't have to, you can do it like this, but this is overkill because if you don't do anything, like if you do it like that, that's the answer you get, you get 4.0, but you can also not provide the base in this case. You can just say log 100. If you say log 100, it still gives you your 4.0, yeah, 4.6. So in this case, it's assuming that your base is E. Are we clear? Yeah, there are also other functions yes, sir. which are more explicit. For example, this one, log 10x. So this log 10x, this basically tells you the base is 10. So if you want something to do your things in base 10, then this is great to go to. So from math, import log 10. So the base is 10. So here when you say, say log 10, then 100, then that's going to give you 2. Uh, then there is this other thing also here, some log, then one minus p. So this one uh, takes, uh, sorry, one plus uh, log, then one plus. So to whatever, but I don't know, I can explain this. Uh, you give it a value of x. To that value of x, it adds what well, i think it, it, it does things uh, return the natural log of one plus x so you give it a value of x and it works out the natural log of that particular value natural as in the base is e so uh, if you want to do this if you need to do something like this for example uh so you say from math import log one one plus so help on one plus log one plus here yeah. so return the natural log of one plus x so whatever value of x you give it it's going to add one then it will work out the natural log are we clear if you give it if you give it 10 then it will add one so it will end up having 11 being 11 it then to work out the natural log of 11 Okay, so basically that's what that function does. It's tricky, but it's okay. For example, here we give it uh, not that. So get uh, log what one p. Okay, so we give it uh, ninety nine. So this 99 is going to add 1, so it will become 100. Then it work out the natural log of 100. And that's something which I've seen before, which is the, I think, 4.6. This one. This. Uh, this last one here is just working out the natural log of 2. Base 2. We're not doing a calculation in base 2. So using base 2 now, which is something I've seen. So there's... A dedicated function which only does calculations base two. So you say from math import log two. That then you can get help on log two. Then you can find out what a particular thing function is with log two. Hundred. What should you uh, to what power should you raise to for you to get hundred? You've seen what this is, which is that bit. So basically. This is these are a sample of mathemat a mathematical functions which are in the math module, and basically we just show you how you 
could use some of these functions but they are a lot more than that than what than what you've looked at if you go back uh, you notice there is uh, something you've not looked at here there is remainder there are also these hyperbolic functions you have not looked at we haven't looked at this we haven't looked at this uh, we haven't looked at this so you can always find out what these functions do uh, we have looked at a few log functions and there is also this one hypotenuse this works out the hypotenuse if you have the opposite and adjacent then it's going to give you the hypotenuse so that's a function that's a very useful function i think there is also uh the gamma function here if you want to work out the gamma function you can do that uh this one works out the hyperbolic cosine so if you want to work out what the cosine is you can do that then this one here works out the distances if you want to work out the distance you can do that this one here works out uh what is referred to as an error function uh there is also this one here i think it works out what's referred to as an error function complementary yeah error function complementary so there are other functions which are here which are useful but which you have not looked at okay so i hope this gives you uh, a good stepping stone to explore the rest of these other functions and how they work and how to use them. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Yeah, so this module, the math module, is a very, very useful module, especially in our case where we're trying to study physics and also do these computational physics things. It's something which you're going to need. So it's something which you should be able to use quickly and fast. Okay, so this is where we come to the end. We don't have a lot. We only have, uh, I think we, have, we, we used the one hour 30. No, just one hour to do this. Uh, the other thing is, I think for now, for today, let's just spend one hour. Uh, next time, I think when we meet, we can be starting at 12 so that we end up using up our two hours completely. But for today, we're going to stop here. So it's just going to be a one hour thing. But next time when we meet, uh, I will change the, the 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 time in the model, and I also make an announcement. I'll make the change in the model so that it starts at twelve, and then we finish at fourteen. But I don't know if it's going to be possible. But Sir. it might be too much. I don't know. Yes. Yes. Is there a question? My Friday class starts twelve hours. So you have got 12 at EAP? Okay. Okay, then it means that we have to shift this so that it can start at 13. Yes. Yeah, so we start at 13. One of 13 hours. Maybe yeah, we start, yeah, hours. I think we can shift it at 13 so that it goes up to 14 hours. Okay, are we clear? So I'll make a change so that it starts at 13 hours to 14 hours. All right. Uh, any other questions? All right. Thank you. Okay. So we'll continue pushing this thing. Remember, you guys are supposed to come into campus. Uh, probably by the time you want, you come into campus. What's the most important thing by the time we are done is that you should be able to program with Python. There are people who have passed this course. You can go and write an exam. You pass but you don't know how to program which means that you have missed half the course okay because the the whole point of this course is that you should be able to do your mathematics using a computer by programming so that's the reason why as you can see we are spending so much time on this thing because this thing has to be done only once the moment i'm sure by the time we are done with the programming pit you can program then i never need to teach you any how to, how to program anything because the rest of the stuff you can teach yourself you had you would have learned enough not to require to be taught but also you'd have learned enough so that you can teach yourself are we clear everything else you're going to do in this course after i finish teaching you the python will involve python so we are trying yes, to make, we are trying to make sure that you have got the tools 
to use to pass the course and also at the, in the process you also learn how to program a computer because everything else other courses are going to need you they will require they will assume that you know how to program in a particular language and you'll be required to do that okay so we end here uh we're going to meet on on tuesday uh 15 hours so when you meet on tuesday yeah i think the thing has cut already <laughs>